Back, come back, I'm gonna rude. Back again, I'm in a mood. I'm in a sort of Monday evening mood, I am. Yes, I am. And I'm feeling severely traumatised after encountering this interview for Mr. Marco Senior. You know the Emmy Award winning lighting director from Hollywood. Yes, yes, you know that poor man that had to father the Marklet. Yes, poor, poor man. Anyway, here he is on, where is he? I don't know. Oh, is it Good Morning Britain? No one watches. It's probably why I haven't seen it yet. Just wait for it to go up on YouTube and then we can discuss you only, can't we? So here we go. Come on, Mr. Markle. Come on, darling. Talk to your old girl. I feel sure. He's not Poor man. open to a peaceful solution. Of course he's not. I don't think. He's just, he's, he's just a... He's an anchor, isn't he? Let's have it right. Yes, she likes yachting and he's an anchor. And I don't think Megan is either. No, so, well, she's and, even worse. Unless yeah. they, those are bored, it's not, that's not going to happen. Well, Charlie, uh, this is uh, Thomas Markle. That awful, that poor man. And he's not going to be much longer for the world, is he? He's already said in the interview that he could have a stroke or a heart attack again at any time. Bless his heart. So he's in this more than twilight years, isn't he, Vutu Vuz? It's very sad. And uh, let's hear what Kev's got to say. Come on, Kev! He lives in uh, Kev, Mexico, you, Kev. Uh, talking directly to Good Morning Britain there by the magic of Zoom or yeah. camera, whatever yeah. it is. He's yeah. not over here. It's just but magic. What's... It's a little box. It is, it is. You have to sort of give it its voodoo rays, don't you? Yes, you do. And you just press things and it's magical. And then all of a sudden, all the people in the box start talking to you. It's amazeballs. I love it, I love it. I'm obsessed with my one. I am, I am. Hello, all the people what live in my laptop. How are Hello, hello, Kev. Again, and we've heard this from him many times, he's begging Meghan, yeah. for that matter, Harry, yeah. who he's never met, he's never met his son-in-law, yes. uh, he's begging them to let him see his grandchildren. Oh, that, and he, see, that could be a problem, you see. You see, it would depend whether Toys R Us are open or not in Britain. Yes, wouldn't it? Or Smiths. Are they still going? Yes. That is a difficult problem. Maybe you should wander around to a cabbage patch or two and see if you can find them there. Do get me capiche? Being cosy only, it's very weird, isn't it? You only sort of see them half obscure doing silhouette, don't you? Or sort of Photoshop beyond all rational reasoning, really. Let's have it right, food too. So, I mean, absence of evidence is evidence of absence or something or other. I, don't, I just thought I'd say that because it does sound like I'm pretty smart, doesn't it? It does. I love that. Absence of evidence is evidence of absence. Ha! I think that's what they said on Harry's reporter Eaton, you know. <laughs> absence of any evidence of life inside that bleeding brain of his. Well, no bless oblige from him. If I was Charles, I'd just be really like, Eaton, and asking here forth, forthwith, straight away, for a bleeding refund. Because he's as thick as two bleeding short planks, isn't he? In fact, he's even thicker than two short planks. And she's just a cow. To be fair, you know, it's my opinion. And I'm entitled to my opinion. She's a cold-hearted, self-centred, self-righteous, entitled, nasty little mare. Isn't she? She really is. Who could stop their dying father seeing their dolls? You know she's been collecting them for a couple of years now, hasn't she? Yes, yeah, she has. Well, even that, and it's all true, and she did eat Nando's while she was in labour. Yeah, because that's a real thing as well, isn't it, ladies? Points out quite rightly that in California, yes. if he wanted to, right. he could legally sue them. Sue them, be, be funny. To see his own sue them, sue them, be amazing. Popcorn, anybody? Popcorn? But he's not going to go down that No, because it'll stress him but, out. You know, she's not if she's an arsehole. But Megan and then don't you think because she's such a spite-filled, bile-filled, obnoxious little entity that that's half the time why where she is very in control of what images you see of them. So if any images are published, they're sort of of the back of Archie's head or him obscured or you know half in silhouette, as I've just said, and so you can never really see them. And people think well. Barry, he, he pontificate that. Oh, it's because we're worried about his security, even though they're surrounded by security guards. I mean, he don't, don't go and have a crap without the security there. To unroll his toilet roll for him, does he? Now, let's have it right. Let's be fair. Come on. Let's let's call a bleeding... What should we call it? We'll just call it... Call it as it is, Gertie. Let's call a spade as bleeding spade. And a twat a twat. Yes, I think we should. 
Um, I think that is because of the way she thinks if you can get inside her sociopathic, narcissistic, malignancy. Little brain cells that are buzzing away at the rate of bleeding knots. Um, that is why she is so sort of um, cunning about what images are taken so you can kind of see them but you kind of can't and that's not for us the unwashed masses that's for her dad and for charles because all the time they're kept hidden they are her bargaining chips for top fours yes they are doodly do do will accede to his request yes will she ever let him see his grandchildren no because well, she's a cow. Short term, Kevin. I, I, I don't think. That no, is... and she's still got the bleeding cheek to get up on stage at the Invictus Games. Go, ah, oh, look at me. I did all my own hair and makeup. I'm virtually a bleeding icon now, and I. Yes, I am. Uh, <laughs> I did it all myself. I did. <laughs> And I wore three hundred and fifty thousand pounds of designer bleeding togs. I did, and I managed to make all of them look equally appalling. I did. I didn't take no prisoners. I didn't have no favourites. I just wore them all like a bad lady. I didn't care. I just pushed the boat out. And to be fair, to be honest, I spent most of the Invictus game wandering round in my drawers. I did. I did. Well, to be fair, most of them haven't got any legs, you see. So I just thought I'd show off mine. I did. I did. I thought, there you go. <laughs> Someone's got legs. Put me off bleeding chicken forever. Anyway, yes, yeah, so she was in her drawers, looking equally appalling and everything. And then you can imagine Gertie's horror when I switched on to online Daily Mail to be regaled with the fact that this bunion actually had £350,000 worth of jewellery and designer togs. I mean, where was that? Yeah, <laughs> I think they're ripping her off. Anyway, it's like I've said before, I just think she wears them and gives them back. And then, so look at me, lad. I just wore a dress, it was 20 grand, yeah. I know it looks like my granny left it, yes. It was one she got buried in, yes. I said to her in the bleeding funeral home, I said, you can think again if you think I'm going to waste that dress on you, you old boot, and took it off her. Yeah, she kept it and wore it to the Invictus Games. I mean, that's what I've heard, but I mean, don't quote me on it, all right? Shh, don't sound sad. Uh, any chance of him being allowed to see his grandchildren? Literally is none. Busy. Now, this is a man who's already no. suffered. He's got serious health problems. Yes. Yeah, he's, he's, he's got a stroke. I'm getting serious health problems. I think the whole world is getting serious health problems with these two creatures standing up there. Where was he at that closing speech? She let him, she let him do the closing speech. She stood there and she reenacted her cult, 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 cult magazine. You know the front of that when she... Tried to look like Elizabeth Holmes, you know, that Thanos woman or whatever. You know what I'm on about. If you do know what I'm on about, can you please tell me? Because I haven't a clue. But anyway, yeah, and he was up there pontificating about them all being a family and sticking together and one thing and another. And apparently it was his 39th birthday. There was me. I thought he was 40, to be honest. Don't look a day over 50, does he? So, you know, what with my wonky eyesight, you got to just give me a swerve. Poor old girl. Yes, I'm half blind, half bleeding senile. Yes, and I'm being driven mad by these two. Yeah, not these two, but those two. And he's very the Monty shit show shysters. Doctors, apparently, from what I can gather, have yes. told him that he could have a another stroke. Um, well, I'm going to have a bloody stroke in a minute if this doesn't stop soon. This madness has to stop. Stop getting on stage and lecturing. Stop using the bleeding veterans to bleed and rub your own egos and polish your own halos on. Please. It's most disconcerting and very unedifying. Yes, and it's not what one would call royal. Well, it's not what one would call even bloody human, let alone royal. And we've all had enough of it. Let your dad see your dolls. And there's an end to it. Let's stop it. Megan, especially Megan. Megan. Even, she, even he calls us Megan. His grandchildren. Now, let's not forget, Megan. our king has only met Lily Beck once. No. So, well, you know, it's not going to be any more than that, because, like, it's the bargaining chips, isn't it? You know? Yeah. Oh, she's got the power. Yes, she has. I've got the power. <laughs> got the power to break your heart of hearts. Got the power. Yes, I have. <laughs> I used to love that song by Snap. In the, in the fact, in the Can't remember how it goes, though. haven't seen the kids since they moved over uh, to, uh, to, to the US, apart from yes. the, um, the, the Jubilee. Power to break um, my heart I mean, poor old Thomas Markle. Yes. I mean, he makes the point. You know, I haven't seen Megan for five years. Yeah. People who get... Oh. 
I'm not being rude to you, Thomas, Mr. Markle Senior. You're a great man and everything, but I'm not, I'm just going to say it as it is. You do not know how lucky you are to have not seen that little witch for five years. <laughs> Can we please just replicate that across the globe? Could we please? It just It would help towards, well, mental health week. Yeah, mental health year. Yes. And well, peace across, you know, the whole of the solar system, no doubt. Just please. Please stop her. We don't want to see her any bleeding more. <laughs> Honestly, you want to be careful what you wish for, poor Mr. Markle. Prison sentences for five years. I know from my knock, it was one thing. It was one thing when they didn't speak to you, but it was quite another when they decided they did want to speak to you. You know, <laughs> it's very pleasant. I like to be on the I don't want to talk to her list. Yes, it was very preferable for your old Gert. Goody, goody, goody. <laughs> Oh, I'm on her bad list. Brilliant. I can get on with my bleeding life. Usually come out and the rehabilitated, but where's my rehabilitation? I, no. don't, I haven't done anything wrong. Well, of course he hasn't done anything wrong. Come on. Let's get with the programme. She cannot let Barry be anywhere near her father. Well, probably if he can't actually talk at all, maybe she might make come off her high horse and make a flying visit. Uh, probably with cameras and back grids and glass and lighting, all that bed head, you know. Uh, and the makeup all smudge. Left here I go and all that crap, yeah. But all the time, Mr. Markle can speak and is surrounded by Thomas Jr. and, and Sam, who can also speak. Um, Barry is not going to go anywhere near her father. No, he's not going to even be in the same continent as her father if she can bleed and help it. Because they know about the BS, don't they? They do, they do. And like, when you think about Doris, I'm not being funny. If I was Doris, shame on her. Because you made a baby together, you and him. And you should let make sure that your daughter has some sort of respect for her father. It's not good for her soul. And I don't say that in a God in heaven. I say it for her psychologically. It's not good for her soul to disrespect her own father long term. And probably when he's gone, to be fair, a narcissist like Megan is going to blame you, Doris. And I, for one, I'm going to laugh. So with that, bye bye now. Over and out.